Hello and welcome back everyone, I am the Otaku, and today I'm going to teach you how to not suck at Bosk. Bosk was a male Trandoshan bounty hunter who was mentor to Boba Fett during his early days and renowned for his effectiveness at killing Wookiees. Using his natural instincts to capture his prey, he was one of the most feared bounty hunters in the galaxy. Bosk comes as part of the Death Star DLC coincidentally alongside Chewbacca, a Wookiee, with his character being a destructive and nasty opponent that has the skills to escape dangerous situations and sustainability that makes him very difficult to get rid of. So today I will be going over everything you need to know from trait and abilities to weapon stats and strategies to teach you how to not suck. Let's get to it. Bosk uses the Relby V10, a highly destructive weapon modified from the Blast Tech Industries CSPL-12 projectile launcher. It can shoot both blaster fire and micro grenades, giving it the name Mortar Gun. Bosk's Relby V10 is actually the same as the regular infantry variant, whereas with heroes we typically see special upgrades to make it more hero-like. He can, however, use the secondary fire mode that is not available to infantry soldiers, giving Bosk the micro grenades ability. So it's a bit of a trade off and an important aspect of Bosk's design, directly influencing what kind of strategy we want to use when playing him, as you will learn more about throughout this video. For now, let's go through the stats and see what the primary blaster fire of the Relby V10 can do. The Relby starts off doing 25 damage per shot up to 10 meters, where the damage will begin to slowly drop off, going down to 19 damage by 60 meters. So within 10 meters you can get a 4 shot kill, then afterwards you are looking at anywhere between 5 to 6 shots per kill. It has a rate of fire of 350 rounds per minute, and will shoot up to 15 rounds before overheating allowing you to get 2 to 3 consecutive infantry kills before overheating depending on the distance. Then finally it has a recoil pattern of 0.05 horizontal and 0.2 vertical, with a base spread of 0 that increases at 0.1 per shot. This means that the weapon is relatively accurate, but firing consecutive shots especially at very long distances will give you a little bit of an accuracy loss. You can compensate for this by intentionally firing the weapon a little bit slower than it actually can, keeping the recoil and spread values down to a minimum. When it comes to time to kill, the Relby places 13th out of 19 blasters between 0 to 15 meters. Then switching things over, between 15 to 30 meters, the Relby drops even further down to 17th out of 19 blasters. Going out a bit further to 40 meters and the Relby starts to shine, placing 6th out of 19 blasters. So clearly it's a pretty subpar weapon, only really competitive at longer distances. Yet even then, there are other blasters like the DLT-19X or T-21 variants that will do the same job, just a little bit better. To make matters worse, Bosk is a hero, or villain rather, and quite often he will be facing off against other heroes. So looking at the time to kill charts for heroes, but including the Relby V10 into the mix, you will see that pretty much any hero or even honor guards would dominate the Relby in a heads up gunfight, which makes sense. But Leia, Solo, and Lando in particular have between a 40 to 50% faster time to kill at any distance, which really puts Bosk in a world of hurt. Yet before you freak out and go crying for buffs, you need to realize that this isn't the whole story. The Relby may not be ideal for a hero weapon as it is, but that doesn't mean that Bosk sucks. Much like Lando uses the X8 night vision scope in unison with his other abilities to create this overall synergy and playstyle, Bosk too heavily relies on his skills to offset his blaster's weak performance, overall making him a very deadly foe. And this all starts with his trait, so let's take a look. Bosk's trait is called Trandoshan Regeneration and will recover a percentage of his health with each kill or by doing damage to heroes. The amount of health regenerated will increase as your trait level does, starting at 1%, then going to 2, then 3, then 5 at rank 3. It's important to note, especially with Bosk, that you can charge your trait level by doing damage or killing enemies with your abilities and not just your blaster. What's even more important is that you actually receive the healing benefits of your trait when using these abilities as well. This is significant because it gives Boss some ridiculous survivability if played correctly. In other words, it places a stronger emphasis on using his abilities to survive and engage in combat, rather than just shooting away with his blaster. 
So with that being said, let's move on to his abilities and see what we're working with. Bosk has three abilities, Predatory Instincts, Micro Grenades, and Toxic Escape. Predatory Instincts increases your damage, sprint speed, and cooldown speed on abilities. The trade-off is that it changes boss visuals to somewhat of a thermal scope, with enemies and allies alike showing as thermal signatures. As you can imagine, this makes it rather difficult to differentiate your targets, while simultaneously making you want to stab your eyes out. Thankfully, Predatory Instincts doesn't have a cooldown, instead it can be toggled on and off anytime you want. So don't worry eyes, you are safe for now. Next is Micro Grenades. This ability activates the Relby V10 secondary fire mode, which allows boss to continuously fire out grenades in a similar fashion to using the Barrage Star card. The grenades detonate after a short period of time or on contact with the enemy. They can even bounce off objects giving you some leeway in terms of how they can be used. The last is Toxic Escape. When used, it throws a Dioxus grenade directly under you and leaps Bosk away from the explosion in the direction he was moving. The Dioxus grenade used for this is several times more potent, having a larger gas radius, increased damage, and in reality, probably smells like 10 times worse. Regular Bosk is actually pretty weak. He has meh health, meh blaster, and his movement speed isn't going to win any races. That is, until you activate Predatory Instincts. This ability is essentially lizard steroids for Bosk and plays an important role in his overall performance. Let me explain why. So as we mentioned before, the Relby isn't all that great and the healing effects from your trait aren't going to completely offset that weakness. Micro Grenades is pretty strong, capable of clearing out entire rooms of infantry or nuking down a group of villains while easily maxing out your trait. The Toxic Escape may not kill enemies as quickly or efficiently, but it does work as a great oh shit button, able to evade attacks and block off your escape route when retreating. So between the strong AoE attack and tricky escape ability, Bosk isn't looking too bad. Yet he's still extremely weak and vulnerable when these are on cooldown. So what ties these abilities together and fills the gap in Bosk's weakness is predatory instincts. By increasing Bosk's damage, it makes the Relby stronger and Bosk less vulnerable when his abilities are on cooldown. The increased speed allows Bosk to play a more effective hit and run or run and gun play style, as well as quickly positioning himself in a way that plays to his strength. Then with the improved cooldown speed, it means not having to wait too long before you can make another go at the enemy after you retreat. So the strategy plays out like this. You want to keep predatory instincts active as often as you can handle. You want to use that increased speed it gives you to quickly maneuver around the map, positioning yourself in advantageous locations where you can strike the enemy where it's going to hurt the most. Once you are ready to attack, open with your micro grenades ability to quickly build up your trait level and devastate as much of the enemy team as possible. When that is done, you can then engage for a little bit with your Relby because now your trait level is maxed out and you can sustain yourself from enemy fire with the health it will give you. When things start to go south or it's time to move on, you can use that toxic escape as your oh shit button and block off your escape route while you make your way to safety. You don't need to have predatory instincts active 100% of the time, especially when you're engaging with micro grenades and making that initial attack, but be sure to have it on anytime you're moving around, shooting with the Relby, or trying to escape. At this point, you should be able to quickly retreat, wait for your cooldowns to go back up, and then go back to engage once again. The skills needed to successfully perform all of this and do well are situational awareness, map knowledge, and cooldown management. If you're not paying attention and getting surrounded with low trait level, you're gonna die. If you don't know the map routes and you don't know the spawns, it's gonna be really difficult for you to catch people off guard and flank your enemies. The not using the right ability at the right time is definitely a one-way ticket to you suck. So try to follow this general strategy and ability rotation, at least at first, until you begin to get a better feel for him and understand the strengths and weaknesses of the character. When it comes to game modes, you are obviously going to have some discrepancy in terms of how well boss can perform. Close quarters combat game modes like Battle Station or Sabotage are where boss can really shine. They are pretty much a breeding ground of ideal situations for him. You have lots of enemies packed together for your micro grenades to do work, 
you have a myriad of terminals and hallways for him to quickly navigate around to flank enemies, and literally anywhere on most of the maps can be turned into a choke point death trap by just popping out your toxic escape. All while still being directly involved in team fights and assisting with objectives, it really doesn't get any better than that. Larger game modes are a bit of a toss up, at least from my experience. As we know, Bosk relies heavily on his abilities to power his trait and gains the most health back from his trait when using them. This means that wide open areas where his abilities are not effective, or small skirmishes where you can't really build up that trait level but you're losing lots of health each time, aren't exactly ideal. Yes, there are some specific areas on certain maps that Bosk can do well even on the larger game modes, and of course you should be capitalizing on them as much as possible but that's not always going to be an option. Sometimes you need to sit back and make use of the Relby's long distance capabilities, while other times you can quickly speed into the front lines, pump out all your abilities and do lots of work. What this comes down to is being situation aware of what's happening on the battlefront of all times. Where is the enemy spawning from? Where is my team? What objectives are we currently on? Etc. And just using that information to make your decisions. What you don't want to do is just blindly run around without any real objective or strategy in mind. Heroes vs Villains outcomes can be pretty similar to larger game modes. The maps are smaller and there are more close quarters combat situations, but at the same time there are so few enemies that it kind of puts you in the same predicament as before. You're going to have a lot of small skirmishes and unfavorable situations and you're just going to have to try and work around that. How well you do is often going to be dictated by how the fights play out. If it's one of those games where both teams are immediately jumping in, clashing together and it's a big team fight, then Bosk has a really good chance to go out there and kick some butt. The more enemies you have grouped together, the more allies around to make you not the only target, the better opportunity you have to do well and make full use of your abilities and the strategy we talked about before. But if it's one of those games where both teams are being kind of passive, then you're going to have a lot of threat in 1v1 fights, you know, the explosive spamming honor guards and all the small clusters of infantry that just trickle in trying to take you down. These small fights can easily wear you down or kill you if they don't always play out exactly in your favor. The best thing you can do in these situations is just play intelligently. Be conservative, sit back, use the Relby's long distance capabilities to your advantage, taking out these infantry before they can even make their way to you. Then, when you see an opportunity to strike, you know, you build up that trait, you open with that rotation, you do as much damage as you can, and then you get back out. But don't be afraid to switch to a super aggressive mode and start hunting down your targets, hopefully leading your team into battle and victory. At first, Bosk may seem rather straightforward and come across as kind of weak. In reality, he is a high skill cap hero that requires a good understanding of his character's overall synergy to perform well. Bosk's strength is in his unique survivability derived from his trait, intelligent use of his abilities, and a suitable playstyle. The better you can understand his character and master the synergy between his abilities, the better you are going to do. Hopefully by watching this video and learning everything there is to know, you have gained the required amount of knowledge necessary to go out there and hunt yourself some rebel scum. Or at the very least, not suck. Thank you all for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, or even donate to support the channel. I'll see you guys next time, but until then, as always, may the otaku be with you.